I'm Joyce Meyer. I've seen God's power transform my own life, and He will do it for you. Well, how many of you are going through something pretty difficult right now in your life? Something that you are really needing to trust God about. Amen? You know, we trust God for things that we want, which we all do. But we also trust God when we're going through things. And it's that trusting him that allows us to go ahead and enjoy our lives even while we don't yet have everything that we would like to have. See, part of the beauty of being a believer is that you can have a problem and still enjoy your life. You can have a problem and still have peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give unto you, but my own special peace I give to you. And then he says, so stop allowing yourselves to be upset and disturbed. Well, he has a responsibility and we have a responsibility. We're going to get started. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23. I actually have this scripture on a sign and it's hanging on my office wall. That's how much I like it. When he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or offer insult in return. When he was abused and suffered, he made no threats of vengeance, but he trusted himself and everything to him who judges fairly. Just imagine how amazing life would be if we could trust God all the time in everything. All the time in everything. Well, Jesus was probably mistreated more than any person on earth has ever been mistreated. And yet, he didn't really trouble himself about it because he trusted God to be his vindicator and to bring justice in his life. One of the character traits about God that I love the most is that the Bible says he is a God of justice. You know what that means? He makes every wrong thing right. Have you ever been mistreated by somebody? Ever been, oh, maybe, maybe you're working real hard at work, but you're the one that always gets looked over for the promotion. You don't get the pay raises that you should get. And maybe somebody else that's not working nearly as hard as you seems to get all the things that you feel like you deserve. Has that ever happened to anybody? No, it happened to me. You know what, those are the great times to say, God, I'm gonna trust you to be my vindicator. If we can trust God to get to us what he wants us to have, instead of looking to people to give us what we want, life is gonna get a lot better. If you've got your eyes on somebody else and you're expecting them to give you what you want, you need to get them off that person today and you need to get them on God. Amen? Because God is the only one that can give us true promotion in our lives. When he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or offer insult in return. When he was mistreated, when he was abused, when people treated him wrong, instead of getting all upset and trying to get them back and making his own plan about how he was going to handle things, he trusted himself and everything to him who judges fairly. Now, if you've watched my TV program or if you've read many of my books or any of my books, you know that I was abused by my dad when I was a child. And although my mother knew about it because one time she caught him, one time I told her, she didn't do anything about it because she lived in absolute fear. So I was abused by my dad, abandoned by my mother, and really, really mistreated in the early years of my life. Nobody should have to go through the kinds of things that many of us do go through in our lives. And I married the first guy that came along because I thought nobody would ever want me. And then he ran around with other women and he was a petty thief. And so uh, the first 23 years of my life, I didn't know much but pain and mistreatment. Well, I came out of that bitter and resentful and blaming. And although I was a Christian, you know, you can be a Christian and still have all those bad attitudes and all those things rolling around in you that don't need to be rolling around in you. So we don't want to just trust God to go to heaven someday when we die. Christianity is about a lot more than that. 
We want to trust God for everything in our lives all the time. Amen? Trust him for everything all the time. And one of the things that we want to trust God for is to be our vindicator, to take wrong things and make them right. Well, when I finally found that out and I started really trusting God to vindicate me, I don't have time to tell you all the stories, but it's amazing the things that God has done for me and my life and the positions that he has put me in, the influence he has allowed me to have, and I know that I know that only God could do it. And I'll tell you, if you will, now listen to what I'm going to say, if you will stop trying so hard to take care of yourself and stop trying so hard to make sure that you get what's due you and stop being mad at everybody who's not giving you what you want and you give God a chance, you will be amazed at what God will do in your life. Let me tell you something. God can give you favor and put you places where no man can ever put you and where you certainly could not put you. Right? So anytime that somebody mistreats you, the first thing you want to do is say, God, I refuse to be mad at them because that's only going to steal my life. But I am going to trust you to bring justice into my life. In Isaiah 61, verses 7 and 8, some of the scriptures that I held on to for many years that really brought me through a lot of the things that I went through. Instead of your farmer's shame, you'll have a twofold reward. Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double what they forfeited, and everlasting joy shall be theirs. You know, when the enemy comes against you one way, the Bible says he has to flee before you seven ways. What man takes away from you, God will give you back double and more if you put your trust in him. Is there anybody in the building today that would like to have double for your trouble? God is a rewarder. He's not a punisher. God is a rewarder, the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when you get your eyes off of what everybody has done to you and you get your eyes on what God can do for you, he becomes your rewarder and you will be amazed at all the things that God will do for you. God has, he's, he's given me a position many times in the midst of men. I was the first and the only woman that ever sat on the board of our church. And this was when I was in a large denominational church where women didn't really do those kinds of things. And I found that over and over in my life. I'll, I'll be doing these things where I'm the only woman doing it. And I asked God one time, how do I end up in these positions all the time? And you know what he put in my heart? Men abused you, and I will always give you a place of honor among men. And see, I'm glad you're happy for me, but I want the same thing to happen to you. I'm not here today just to tell you my great story of success, but I want you to know that God is no respecter of persons, and what he does for one person, he will do for another, but it's not going to happen if we don't trust him. Trust him. And trusting God means that we stop trying to make things happen ourselves, and we wait on God. How many love waiting? We wait on God. It's a painful word even to say it. And God doesn't do it when we'd like him to or the way we'd like him to. But I can promise you today, if you will keep your eyes on God and trust him to be your recompense and to be your reward and to be your vindicator, you will get double blessings for your farmer trouble. Amen? How many of you feel like that well, let's put it like this. You know, when you've been hurt, there's a feeling there that, well, somebody owes me. I'm, I'm do something. I want to be paid back. You ever felt that? It's like, and so if we're not careful, we can go through life with this little chip on our shoulder. They're like, well, the world owes me something. But the thing that we do that is a mistake many times is we're trying to collect from people that can't pay us. 
I did that for a long time because men had mistreated me. I was trying to collect from all the rest of the men in the world. And so I had an attitude toward men that wasn't healthy. And even when Dave and I got married and he was a wonderful husband, I had been hurt by so many men that I just had an attitude and I was trying to get Dave to pay me back for what somebody else had taken away from me. And Matthew 18 says that when the, when the guy was trying to get the person who owed them the money to pay him back, the Bible says, and he could not pay, and he could not pay. And boy, when I got a hold of that, I thought, people can't pay me back. Nobody can pay me back for the childhood that my father stole from me. I can never go back and do that childhood over. But you know what? God can make me have such a wonderful life in my 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s where I'm at now. Is anybody here ready to let God pay you back? All right, well, you know what? Then you have to do things God's way and not man's way. Listen to this scripture, Psalm 147, 3. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds, curing their pains and their sorrows. You know, broken hearts do mend, bodies do heal. Disappointment turns into new dreams and the end of one thing can open the door for something new if we will just put our trust in God. You know what? If you're still here on the planet, God's got a plan for you. I said, if you're still here, you're breathing, God's got a plan for you. He's not finished with you yet. Now, many of you go to this church, and so you know Pastor Charles, of course. Uh, amen. I can tell you guys really love him, and so that tells me that he's pretty good at what he's doing. Amen. And... I know from personal conversations how committed he is to this church and, and just how meaningful it is to him. And I've had the blessing of knowing him for a few years. We don't get to spend a lot of time together, but I, I do know him to some degree. And I was around when the terrible tragedy happened where his beautiful young wife died with cancer. And I asked him if it was all right for me to talk about this a little bit, and he said that it was because he said something to me after that happened that I thought was absolutely amazing. And I would like it to be something that you think about as we go through this message today. She was, what happened to her should not have happened. You're not gonna find a reason for that. You're not gonna find a place to put it in some neat little package where we can all understand it and feel okay about it. It just was a terrible thing. She was a woman of faith, a godly woman, helping other people. They're pastoring a church. She gets sick. Everybody prays, expecting miracles, and God takes her home. By the way, I do want to tell you that she is healed today because the minute that you pass into heaven, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. You know, so often when we pray for a healing and we don't get it or we pray for somebody else to be healed and they don't get it, that's really not accurate. They do get it. They do because the minute that you pass from here to your heavenly home, everything is made perfect. In the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, everything is made perfect. But he said, he said to me, and I can't imagine the pain of what he and his family went through, and even the church here. Um, you know, it's one thing to trust God in the light. It's another thing to trust God in the dark. It's one thing to trust God when you think you got it figured out and you're getting what you want, and you can understand what's going on. It's another thing entirely to not get what you asked for, to have no understanding at all of why or what is happening, and still be able to say, God, I trust you. That's the kind of faith we're after. And you know what? That's the kind of faith that the world needs to see. That's the kind of faith the world needs to see. People are looking at us. You put a bumper sticker on your car, people are watching your character. Come on. And they don't want to just see your bumper sticker. They want to see the fruit in your life of what does it really mean to be a Christian. And so... 
Pastor Charles told me this, and if this is your home church, you've probably heard it, but we're not only talking to people here today, but millions of people all over the world by TV, people that are going through horrendous things, people that are hurting, people that have had unfair things happen to you, and it seems to you like God's forgotten all about you. Well, he hasn't. He hears you, and he sees you. Can I tell you today that you're not invisible? God knows exactly where you're at, and he knows exactly what's going on in your life, and he knows exactly how much you can take and how much you can't take, and he may not be early, but he won't be late. God will deliver you at just the right time. Come on, this day is about hope. The enemy can come against me one way, but he'll have to flee before me seven ways. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers him out of them all. But this is what he said to me. He said, after my wife died, I said to God, I'm never going to ask you why, which I don't know that it's wrong to ask why, but I will tell you that you're probably not going to get an answer. And even if you do, it may be something you concoct in your mind that really isn't the reality. Now, I don't mean that God won't give us understanding on things because he certainly does. I had a lot of questions about why God didn't get me out of the abusive situation I was in as a child. I was born again when I was nine years old, and I started praying and asking God to deliver me. Now, I was probably praying some stuff that wasn't too good, like I prayed for my dad to die and stuff like that. That wasn't <laughs> probably the best plan. But God saw my little heart, and he knew my suffering, and, and he didn't deliver me. But he did get me through it, and he made me stronger as a result of it. Now, I asked why for a long, long time, and I got a little bit of understanding, but to be honest, I still cannot understand why something like that happens, but I don't even care anymore. You know why I don't care? Because I'm not looking at what I didn't get, I'm looking at what I did get. I'm not looking at what I lost, I'm looking at what I found. Come on. So he said, I'll never ask you why, and here again, I'm not saying it's wrong if you do that. The second thing he said, and this was probably even more important to me, he said one of the first things he prayed was, God, please help me do this right. Now, I don't know if you know for sure what that means, but I knew immediately what he meant. Because here's the thing. It's easy to stand up and preach. It's easy even as a believer to encourage other believers about what they should do when they're having problems. We've always got a good answer for everybody, don't we? Well, just trust God. Just trust God. God's going to work it out. Be patient. It's all going to work out in the end. Just let it go. God will reward you. But we not only need to tell it to other people, we need to do it in our own life. And so the thing that he was praying, and the reason why I love this is because his first prayer wasn't for God to relieve his pain. His first prayer was, God, help me represent you right to my congregation and to the world that I'm in so people can see that having faith in you actually does work and that it pays off. Come on, give God a praise. So thank you, Pastor, for being such a good example to all of us. And I, I know that... And I know when he prayed that prayer, that didn't mean that his pain stopped. That didn't mean that he still didn't suffer inside, but he had made a decision that how he represented God was more important than how he felt personally. And one of the main things that I want you to have as a takeaway from this morning session today is let's get more concerned about how we represent Jesus in the world, even then we are getting what we want when we want it the way we want it.
You know what? We're just a little bit too addicted to getting what we want. I wonder how many people today, maybe fewer here in the church because this is a lifestyle for you, but I wonder how many, possibly hundreds of thousands of people that are watching today and you're just a little bit mad at God. I mean, if the truth is told, there's just a little rift between you and God because you don't understand some of the things that have happened in your life and they don't seem fair. And if you're not careful, you can take that too far and man, it will steal your walk with God. I said last night and I'm gonna say it again today. I don't know why we don't just go ahead and wholeheartedly trust God in everything all the time because we only have two options. Trust God or be miserable. Can anybody here think of another option? I can't. We're either gonna trust God or we're going to be miserable. And you know, the world can think, well, you're, you're a fool trusting God like that. Well, you know what? I'd rather be a happy fool <laughs> And I've said this often in my teaching, but I'm going to say it again today. You know, here's the thing. If I spend my whole life loving God, trusting Him, serving Him, studying the Bible every day, preaching every time I turn around, and I get to the end of my life and there's no God, well, at least I was happy. But <laughs> if you're wrong, Come on, if those of you who don't believe are wrong and you get to the end of your life and whoops, there's God. So I don't know what you wanna do, but if you're gonna take a chance on anything, let's take a chance that God is real and let's act like he is and let's serve him. Come on. So I was, I've, I've shared what he said in a couple of other of my conferences because I really want us all to get to the point where we're more concerned about how we're representing God in the world than we are just getting what we want all the time. Now, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we don't want to let our troubles separate us from God. We want them to drive us to him. Come to him and let him give you rest. The rest that he's talking about is not laying down and taking a nap. He's talking about a supernatural rest that you can have in your, in your spirit when everything around you is in turmoil. See, when, when we decide to trust God, that doesn't mean that we don't still hurt or that we don't still go through things, but it does mean that way down deep inside, everybody say way down deep inside. <laughs> that way down deep inside, there's a, a, a knowing, just a quiet little knowing, it's gonna be okay. I don't know when, I don't know how, but it's gonna be okay. God's gonna come through, it's going to work out for me in my life. Amen. Psalm 37. One through five. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. <laughs> Neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness, that which is not upright or in right standing with God. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Now, there's a lot of concern over what's going on in the world today. And People say often, do you, do you really think that we're living in the last days? Do you, do you think this is it? Do you think Jesus is coming back soon? What do you, what do you think is going to happen? And, and a lot of people are living in fear. But one of the privileges that we have as believers is we don't have to live in fear. Because here's the thing, no matter what happens, God's going to take care of us. Did you hear me? No matter what happens, God is going to take care of us. So we don't need to fret over it. And I believe that those of us that are alive 
in this day and hour are here for a very special purpose. And I think one of the things that God really wants us to do is turn the lights up. Did you hear me? He wants us to turn the lights up. The darker it gets in the world, the brighter the light is going to shine. You know, if you've got a light on in a light room, nobody notices the light. But if you're in a dark room and somebody turns on one little light, everybody's attention is drawn to that. Well, no wonder Jesus said that we are the light of the world. He's the light of the world, but now he's passed that on to us. We are the light of the world. And it's so important for us that we make a decision that, that our main job, can I tell you something? Your main job right here, right now on the earth is to get out into your corner of the world and represent Jesus. Now, I don't know, maybe that doesn't interest you like it should, but that's why you're here. It's not just to get everything you want, although God will give us many of the things that we want. We are, listen to me, we are going to go through some of the same things that other people in the world go through. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And God wants us to trust, 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 and then trust, and then trust, and then trust some more, that however it works out, we're his kids and he's going to take care of us. Have you been looking for a 365-day devotional? Well, look no further than the promises for your everyday life devotional from Joyce Meyer. There's a focus verse for all 365 days of the year, along with a prayer starter. Get your copy of Promises for Your Everyday Life devotional at joycemeyer.org slash 365devo. We have an exciting YouTube offer that's specially designed to help you spend quality time with your kids and nurture their growth with God, the incredible power of God's Word, and Best Day Ever, two remarkable books crafted to inspire kids as they embark on a faith-filled exploration and discover the wonders of God's love. Unleash the power of faith and create unforgettable moments with your kids. Go to joycemeyer.org slash kidsdevo and grab this limited time offer today. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks, and the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to joycemeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace. The mind actually is the battlefield. That's where we win or lose the war with Satan. He said all he gets to say. <laughs> he says, Jesus the rest, the rest, is the rest of the day is mine. You start asking God to heal you and he will restore. He's the God of all comfort. And I am so grateful that I know how to call on God.